If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, once again with T1 Baby, T1 Stoneforge Mystic. This is my little T1 Baby Bear, little cap, cute little cap. I'm going to do a deck tech for you with her while I have her. I'm going to try to do it as best I can uh, off the top of my head. I don't have my deck with me, I don't have my notes with me. Uh, because I'm going to be playing with you. Mm -hmm. And if I have a computer out to remind me of the deck list, she'll mess with that. Hey there. Hey there. <gasps> yeah, you see that. You see the camera. <gasps> oh my goodness. You can play with it afterwards, okay? Mm -hmm. Kissy monster. Mm -hmm. oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Works every time. Alright, so... This is a Popper Bant Turbo Fog deck. I'm not going to go over, uh, say, like the Sultai version, or the, the ones that have black in place of uh, one of those colors or that do four color, because I'm not going to talk about the Delve Creature variants. Um, that will be a different deck tech, but for right now, I'm just going to focus on ones that win just through Mill Jace's Erasure and Curse of the Bloody Tome. Uh, definitely the first, usually the second as well, at least some number of copies. Um, and I'm actually going to give you sort of the blueprint. You can adjust the exact list uh, to your meta. I feel like I have to sneeze, so give me just this. If I sneeze, she laughs at that, so one, two, three. <coughs> oh, well, okay. Distracted. Ready? Evangeline. Achoo! 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 There we go. Achoo! Like that. That's what usually happens. Okay, okay, T1 Baby Bear, help me out. So we start off the list with four Jace's Erasure, a little two-drop. Whenever you draw a card, they mill one. So that's nice and fun. We're going to abuse that to high heck. Uh, we're going to mill them mostly by drawing a bunch of cards. A bunch. It's cheaper than Curse of the Bloody Tome, and sometimes it can actually just mill them more quickly anyway. So... I love you. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, we care about using this more than Curse, generally. But I also run four Curse of the Bloody... <laughs> just a little baby bear at the bottom. I also run four Curse of the Bloody Tome. Uh, that gives me eight win condition cards in the deck. Um, just more expensive, but it's a consistent mill card. And that's... <laughs> that's it for that. Oh, those are the only win conditions we have in this version of the list, so we mill them out. Uh, next, we have... I'm actually going to get the Fogs last. Uh, in order to abuse our Jace's Erasure, we have a lot of draw spells. I run uh, for Brainstorm, because Brainstorm is legal in this format. And draw three, put two back. Importantly... Oh. It may be about nap time. There we go. There we go. Importantly, uh, draw three means that Jace's Erasure will make them mill three. So that's always good. And because we have fetch lands, Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, I run those so that we can get our perfect brainstorms. It's obviously not as good, the lands will come in tapped, um, but to accommodate this, we have six islands, one forest, one plains. You're probably going to want your fetches anyway, just to be able to get all three of your colors. And this gives us an, the ability to do that really readily, right? Really readily, right? Do you like alliteration? I know what word you do like. Boots. There we go. She lights up. Yeah. Can you say boots? <laughs> and speaking of legacy cards, actually this one's not even legacy legal, not anymore. This is Gush. This card is so good that there have been times where this card has been restricted in vintage. And it's legal and popper. So, we run Gush. We run four Gush. We use this, obviously, for draw. It's a free cast draw spell. Uh, we can kind of use it as a pseudo-ramp spell. You don't have any more lands in your hand, or even if you do, um, you float two, and then play your Gush, and you can play another land. And you've kind of ramped yourself a little bit. It's not really the, the main purpose, but it's something that you can do. It's a neat little trick. What are you doing? He's crawling up me. 
Yeah, I see a little bear on your hand. Your little glove bear. Oh my goodness. Uh, next we have for Thought Scour. Because this one does double duty, it mills them and it draws a card for us. Uh, which also mills them with Jace's Erasure. So, that's a good one. We used to be able to run Treasure Cruise. Rip Treasure Cruise. In my estimation, there probably wouldn't even be a uh, Sultai version of this deck if we didn't... I mean, if Treasure Cruise were not banned. Because it's just that good. Pay one mana, draw three cards. In a deck that fills its graveyard up, yeah, that seems pretty good. Between the fetch lands and the fogs and the draw spells, it doesn't take long for us to treasure cruise and cruise and cruise and cruise. So, but unfortunately that's banned, which makes this deck a lot less insanely powerful than it could be. Um, and so if you need more draw spells, may I recommend uh, Compulsive Research. Draw three cards, then discard one unless you discard a land. It is not hard to get into a state in this game where you discard lands because you are you don't need your lands anymore. Um, especially when you go gushing and gushing and gushing and have a ton of lands in your hand. Um, yeah, you can take it off and put it right back on. That's how gloves work. And then have it halfway on. <laughs> it doesn't really work for me so well. See, I can get like three things. <gasps> oh my goodness! I can wear it too! Yeah. Yeah, it's mostly your thing, though. Mostly your thing. Yeah. Um, but since we can't run Treasure Cruise, Compulsive Research, it's three mana, though, so feel free to not. Uh, there are some others that people try to run. Uh, for example, there's a counter spell that uh, makes your... It counters the spell, but your opponent can draw up to two cards, and then you draw a card. So that isn't great, except... This deck sort of breaks the symmetry of that a little bit. If the opponent draws two cards, then they're two cards closer to milling themselves out. And given that so many of their cards are dead anyway in the match, that might still be something that you want to run, especially if you need counterspells in the main board. Um, personally, that's not my cup of tea, at least not in the main board, but feel free to disagree. Getting the other glove out. Yeah, I see that. And now for our fogs, and this is going to be the hardest part to do from memory. Oh no, I see that. I see what you see. Let's put the teddy bear in front of it so hopefully you don't see that anymore. It's the phone. I don't want her playing with the phone. I don't want you to call Obama. I don't want you to call 911. I don't want you to call insert random number here that gets me in trouble. Okay. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. So I'm going to divide these fogs into a number of different categories. Um, first, there are the two that I consider the must-haves. You must run these. Uh, they are Moments Peace, because it's essentially two fogs in one card. Just two drop for the first, and then you flash it back for three. I mean, that's, that's where you want to be in the deck. Uh, if the object of the game for your opponent is to keep swinging at you until eventually you run out of fogs, this makes it that much harder. <sighs> yep. If every fog is time walk, and in some matchups they just are time walk, not quite, but you get the idea, then Moments Peace is that you take two extra turns for five mana. So that seems pretty good. And not even five mana all at once, right? Uh, and then there's Dawn Charm. You run this not just because it acts as a fog, but also because the worst match that this deck has is Burn. Well, Burn or anything that doesn't use combat to deal damage. Burn obviously does use combat, but it doesn't solely rely on it. Uh, they can bolt you. They can rift bolt you. They can you know, spike you, do whatever. There's, there's a lot of good Burn spells in common. It's a tough match for us. Uh, in the sideboard, we bring in Blue Elemental Blast and COP Red, but there we go, right? Uh, there's not much that we can do about it in the main board. Dawn Charm does something. And now we're going to go through the other categories. So the first is the cheap ones. We have Fog, Actual, Factual, Fog, running green, fine. Uh, there is Holy Day, which is a functional reprint in white, a color-shifted Fog, but better than that is a card called Ethereal Haze. 
Ethereal Haste prevents all damage that creatures would deal, not just combat damage. So you can do this in response to a prodigal sorcerer pinging you? I, I don't know. If it's creature damage that isn't just combat, so being pinged for instance, um, then yes, that's one way to go about preventing it. Hey there, silly boots. I said the word. I said the magic word. Yeah. Uh, and then next we have, so, Darkness, again, we're not doing the black versions of the list, but if you're running a Delve version, Darkness is just color shifted into black, but it's fog. Um, now we have the ones that prevent all damage. Uh, these are Riot Control and Safe Passage. Uh, riot Control gains you life, uh, but it doesn't protect your creatures, it only protects you, but it protects you from all damage. That includes burn spells, for instance. Yeah, you're done. Dun, dun, dun. You had that quickly. Well, you had a lot of it before we got on camera, though, so that'll do it. Hey, can you join me, please? Stay with me for just a moment, okay? I need you to make the cuteness factor higher. Okay. Don't make me tickle you. Tickle, 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 tickle. Can you say SpaghettiOs? Yes. Yeah, that's another word you like. Can you say cookie? <laughs> All right. All right, so uh, right control and safe pa passage prevent all damage that would be dealt to you, um, not just combat damage. And next we have the life gain category, which includes uh, riot control, again, it fits both of those. There's also a card called respite which prevents combat damage, and it gives you one life, not for each creature they control, but for each attacking creature. Now, the reason that life gain ones are important is, again, because of the burn match. See, the burn match will try to get use, the, use their creatures to get you as close to lethal as possible, and then they use their burn spells to finish you off. In other words, they get you into a certain threat range. Oh, I got you. And they either force you to start using your fog spells earlier than you would want to because you don't want to die to the burn spells and if they force you to do it early then you might run out of fog spells early or you use them right on time but then you can die to bolts if you have fogs that give you life back then they help to get you out of that threat range and so riot control and respite are good for that absolutely um, the burn decks aren't going to stop attacking you they might in certain variants like the heroics deck or a battle rage or assault strobe deck they might eventually get to the point where they only attack with one creature and you gain one life. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. If they're smart about it. It's like a, when a Splinter Twin player would get wise about it and instead of hitting you with a million creatures, they'd play around cards like Rakdos Charm and hit you with enough creatures to be lethal. Or enough plus one or something like that. There's nothing else in there. Not anymore. Um, and then we have a few miscellaneous ones. If you're playing using online rules, Tangle is also a good one. Tangle has not been printed as a common, but it is a common online. I want to say it was Vintage Masters. Forgive me if that's wrong, but I think it's Vintage Masters uh, that makes it legal. It taps down, or it prevents the attacking creatures from untapping during the next untap step. And so, lo and behold, that kind of can act as two fogs. Again, you could get into a situation where the opponent wises up and plays around it by only attacking with enough creatures and leaving enough back that when you tangle, you, they still have lethal next turn. That's possible. Um, but if they don't, you'll, you'll get people once. You may not get them more than once with tangle, but you'll get them once. So it's a little overrated, but even if you get into a situation where, like for example, um, they have to swing with all of their creatures for it to be lethal, this is usually the case when it's the first spell that you're using, uh, the first fog spell, um, then yes, you can just double time walk them with that. That is certainly true. You want to get up a little bit higher so we can see you? A little bit higher? There we go. Let me give you a little seed. Oh, it's getting close to nap time. Kissy monster! <laughs> Alright. Uh, and then there's another category. Um, I, I don't think I'm finished with miscellaneous just yet, but I'll get back to that. 
this other category is fog spells that work against non-creature decks. So what I mean is that, well, Esper Familiars isn't really a deck anymore, but sometimes you'll come across decks that just don't use combat at all. Say, the Fog Mirror, or uh, I have a friend of mine that runs a deck called One Land Spy. I believe it's called One Land Spy. It kills you with Haunting Misery in the main board, and it has a combo in the sideboard that uses Grey Merchant of Asphodel, Gary. So, in those decks, in those matches, your fogs do jack-all. Um, I actually don't remember if Haunting Misery is life loss or damage. <clears throat> Though I think the former. Um, and so in those matches, if you're just, if all it does is prevent combat damage, <coughs> then it doesn't do you all that much. But cards like Dawn Charm have utility outside of that, because you can use it to prevent a spell from targeting you, like Corrupt or Haunting Misery. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, fun fact, Thought Scour targets. It's target a player and then they draw a card. Yeah. You can counter it with a Dawn Charm. Uh, because once all targets are made yeah. illegal, assuming they targeted yeah. you, which they're likely to, they don't have to, though. If they're trying to fill their graveyard for Delve, or look for that moments piece, they might target themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I see you over there. Do you see yourself? Do you see yourself in the camera? Oh, you see yourself in the mirror? There we go. There you are. Hi. Can you say, boots? <laughs> yeah. Can you say, poop? <laughs> The weirdest words are the funniest ones to her. Um, next we also have Angel Song and Lull. They're the same card, but one is green, one is white. I got them backwards. Uh, Angel Song is the white one, Lull is the green one. They cycle to draw you a card. So if you find yourself in a match where you don't need the fogs to fog, you can cycle them instead to just find a win condition more readily. Um, miscellaneous. Back to miscellaneous. There's also Muddle the Mixture. It's not a true fog, but it finds you a lot of fogs. It finds you the aforementioned Dawn Charm, Tangle, Moments Peace, Angel Song, Lull. Um, it counters a spell if you need it to. It counters instants or sorcery, so it does something in the burn match. <laughs> yeah. I see you see yourself in the mirror. Or you're seeing me in the mirror. Hey there. This is the sound of one hand clapping. <laughs> She's so precious. She's so precious to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, and it also, so it goes and transmutes for one of those cards. It also transmutes for Jace's Erasure, if you need one as a win condition. So that's always fun. Um, I'm trying to stand you up. I'm trying to stand you up. And you want to sit... It's okay. It's okay. There we go. There we go. Oh. Love, love. Can you tell it's close to nap time? We're almost done. Um, so the land base. What I do is I run four Evolving Wilds and four Terramorphic Expanse. We run six islands, a forest, and a plains. Usually, of course, you need islands, but if you have a hand that doesn't have a green or white source to start fogging, you can go and get the forest or the plains. Um, we're at 16 lands now. We also have four blossoming sands, I believe it's called. It's the Cons of Tarkir, Common, Gain One Life, and it's the Selesnia. Yeah. So it, excuse me, gets you green or white. The life gain might be really consequential. It might help. Let me scratch your back. Um, but that gives us 20 lands. Usually that's enough. That gives us six islands that we can gush, with which we can gush. Um, but because we have our fetch lands, that's effectively up to 14, it seems. Um, so that's always good. So the way that I run the list, it's 20 lands, eight win conditions, four Jace's Erasure, four Curse of the Bloody Tome. I run 12 draw spells. I run four Thought Scour, four Brainstorm, four Gush. And then the other 20, I have as some mixture of the aforementioned fog spells. I don't run Muddle the Mixture, but feel free to do so. I would run it in the sideboard. Um, I think that I actually will, 
in the future. Uh, unfortunately, because of Sword of the Meek being unbanned and Metal the Mixture's ability to get both Sword of the Meek and Thopter Foundry, it is a much more expensive card than it used to be. It is still a common though, so hopefully you can find it, and hopefully it'll get a reprint uh, fairly quickly. Yeah. I see you over there. Yeah, Madame Moo Cow. Oh, pff, there you go. Shake it. Shake, shake, shake. No, not yet. Okay. Um, so that's... That's it. And what exact fog spells you'll take depend on what you expect in your meta. Um, I would not go without Dawn Charm and Moments Peace. If you're playing online, Tangle might also be where it's at. Um, now, what others you would run, I personally prefer having Riot Control in there because it both stops non-combat damage with combat damage and it gains you life, so it seems really versatile. I would like to run Ethereal Haze because we need a cheap one, and it's a little tricky. We don't, in my meta, we don't have a lot of uh, non-creature decks, so I don't feel like I have to run Angel Song or Lull. Uh, so I would run probably just basic fog as well. I want to have enough cheap ones that I can start fogging early. The cheap ones are important because if you throw down a Jace's Erasure or Curse of the Bloody Tome, you aren't going to be able to cast a riot, uh, riot Control or Safe Passage very early on. You're going to need a cheap one, in all likelihood. Um, and so, you know, you cast the turn three... Well, I don't know. Let's say you cast the turn two Jace's Erasure, and... I don't know. It, I'm trying to think of a, a scenario. Like, it's obvious if you get to, like, turn three Jace's Erasure, you can hold up one for Fog. That's not all that uncommon. Um, or turn four Curse of the Bloody Tome, hold up one for Fog. So having the cheap ones is important for that. Um, if you can find anything to use the graveyard for, there is one common delve spell uh, from Cons of Tarkir that taps down two creatures and doesn't let them untap, but it's only two. There are a lot of board states where that won't do you any good. And some decks even, like Vogels, where that won't do you any good. So I don't run it. But in the uh, Sultai list, or the ones that have black, I shouldn't say Sultai, there's a number of different color combinations that include black. Um, you would use this to fuel a uh, Gurmog Angler at all. So, I guess that's it. Hopefully I didn't leave any out. <laughs> yeah, I see that's it and she knows. Uh, hopefully I didn't let leave out any fogs or whatnot. If I did, um, hopefully they're on the screen right here. Um, if I could find them. Or they're in the description below. And with that all being said, I think that we're about ready. I think that we're about done. Okay. Mm. Say bye bye. Dad. That's not quite bye bye, but that works. Bye. All right, one more time. <gasps> Boots. Spaghettios. Yeah. Right. Bye.